welcome to Telequa Athletics. Uh, got the golden voice of Sam in the background announcing the uh, uh, lineups. Number one, Jackson And we'll just listen to him. Yeah, and as usual, there's a disclaimer that goes into this when we don't have built-in internet when we're running a booster. I think we've got it situated pretty good where we've got good internet enough to stream. But it may buffer if it buffers, just bear with us. we got Ryan Hosley back on the camera down there trying to get us a better angle than what we had last year. He's in the bleachers with everybody. Hopefully you don't get a foul ball straight back. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, Coeda, or the ball game nights, Coeda versus Telequa Tigers, the Tigers against the Tigers. And, uh, Coeda's in their black uniforms. We got Craig Wing doing the technology. And I am Gary Wing, Green Country Sports Network. Beckett's batting 403. I'm kind of excited to win blowing out tonight. Might get to see some moon shots, you never know. Yeah. Last game I stopped in and tried to watch. It was blowing in from the north about 25 miles an hour. There wasn't nothing getting out of here. Your pitcher, number 10, Levi Kelly. Levi's a junior, having a good year this year. Baseman number three, Tate Travel. And out right field today for the Tigers, number six, Jacob Morrison. Uh, senior for the Tigers. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Play ball, as they say. Uh, Telquan's got a pretty good crowd down there this afternoon. I see uh, Nadine Roselle, and uh, if she had a dollar for every ball game she's seen in her life, she'd be a multi-millionaire. Um, Only if she would take it to Two Sisters Financial and get it invested. <laughs> uh, Levi Kelly's on the mound today. He's a junior. Uh, four wins, one loss on the season, and an outstanding 1.75 ERA. Uh, Craig? That's really good for high school. That is really good. Uh, these aluminum bats, man, they, they fly off there. Ball field's in beautiful shape, isn't it? Uh, it's just... Uh, Amazing. Yeah, it makes me want to go roll in it. <laughs> Looks so uh, soft. Yeah. Telequa's had such a upgrade in their facilities uh, over the last uh, few years. Uh, I can't remember how long this stadium has been here, but it's uh, 
It is a beautiful facility. Yeah, and they got the new indoor practice facility built over there down the third baseline. I guess it's uh, it's in action now. Yeah. Uh, Telequaw uh, has just had an outstanding tradition of baseball. Uh, back in the 50s, they went to the state state baseball tournament. 53, 55, 56, 58, 59, and then again in 60 and 62. Uh, and of course, uh, we Telequaz won the state championship twice in baseball. This is 1971, and then again in 1996. Uh, and always had a good little league program, seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cutter Gardner's dad was on that 96 team, so he's up in the press box. We're going to hear some good stories from him. Oh, line shot out to right field and uh, just over the outstretched hands of Tate Trammell. I don't think he uh, anticipated that carry in the way that he did. Well, I didn't either. It looked like he's off the end of the bat. That, those aluminum bats will do that. Though. That's probably in a broken bat if you're using wood and a little dribbler out to second base. So here we go. Runner on first. Uh-oh. Tempted pickoff play and another oh, bad throw. <laughs> Left fielder did a great job of backing that up. So we had an attempt to pick off the first of a wild throw. And who said baseball's boring? They had <laughs> people running everywhere out there. Everybody has a job on every play. Everybody should be moving all the time. Yep. Do you want to do this? I do not. Okay. All right. I want to do as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Showed bun on that first pitch. Go 0 1 here. So, this is our center fielder here, uh, Jackson Plyer. We got the curveball over for a strike. Yeah. Another attempted butt. Well, now he can't butt. He's got two strikes on him. If he fouls it off, it's an out. But he could. He could. And a little bit outside. Just a bit outside. <laughs> I love that movie. I uh, love that movie. Of course, that was catcher could catch it, so that wasn't quite that far outside. Well, he didn't hit the bull. <laughs> Uh-oh. Another dinker into right field. Oh, I thought he could get him at first on that one. You know, that was a really good piece of hitting right there. He had a 0-2 count or a 1-2 count. He went with the pitch that was on the outside part of the plate and just oh, hit it, hit it in the right, outfield. That's all you got to do. Right field, yeah. Such a simple game. <laughs> yes. Yes, so Connor, Connor Barnett, number five, is up to the – he's a big, big boy. Gets a hold of one of these, he might send it out there. So it's 315 feet down the left and right field line, and uh, 400 to dead center. Pretty big high school park. Yeah, and that center field fence is 18 feet high, maybe. And stolen base. So runners on second and third with uh, nobody out. It's kind of kind of getting a little nerve-wracking here. Yeah, on a 2-0 count, you know, you may pick at the edges here, but I wouldn't groove anything to their number three hitter. Yeah. Well, he took a cut. Took a cut. Got it. 
little bit high. So uh, three balls and one strike. This is uh, this is a hitter's uh, count here. Yeah, you're sitting on something. Whatever you're sitting on, and if you don't get it, you can let it go. So this is not starting out the way uh, Coach had it drawn up. I'm sure. Was a good one. That looked like a slider. Was that a slider? A uh, little bend to it looked like. So full count here. The runners will have to hang on because it's not a two two outs. Hmm. Yeah, he didn't even tempt him with that. It wasn't close enough to even make him think about swinging. High and outside. So bases loaded here with nobody out in the top of the first inning. For the cleanup hitter, that's not what you want to do. No. No. So uh, we need a play. We need a good play. That's a nice pitch. Nice pitch right there. 1971 was the first state championship. Hopefully this team can get one. Oh, he jumps way ahead. Uh, two straight strikes there. So it'd be good to come back with three strikeouts, wouldn't it? If you're dreaming, I'm dreaming. Well, big. or get a strikeout here and a ground out double play the next at bat. That'd there be all right. You go. That was close. Hard to lay off that one yeah. with 0-2 count. Yeah. Camera angle's a lot better. Ooh. Tempted Ooh. him. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, we did this last year, or Craig and Kelly did, Callaway, and that there was a bar right across the pitchers. So much better today. Yeah, I'm going to have to go down in between innings and tilt it a little bit. Oh, there it is. Blue one high. Fastball right by him. Those look so easy to hit as a hitter because it's right in your eyes and it's it's hard to catch up to them. Yeah. Uh, Caden Dollar uh, up to bat. That's a big, big young man. Mm -hmm. I don't remember him from basketball. But he definitely big enough to play. cut. So we're out uh, big strike one. Uh, Kelly kind of getting it together here a little bit. Looking good. And what's he going to throw, Craig? Oh, Curveball. Curve. A little change up on that one. He's not missing much on that one. And it, you know, with a with a big hitter, with a long swing, anything off speed can really get them off their stride and make them look silly if you can get it get it to work. Oh, it fouls one off to the left. To the practice facility. Deemed it, I think. I heard <laughs> that one. So we got a one ball, two uh, strike count, one out, and a uh, big pitch right here, Craig. Let's make something good happen here. Oh, there's that change up you were talking about. Well, I was wanting uh, three straight strikeouts. Yeah. We got two. So now the base is loaded. Uh, the runners will be running on contact here. So if he gets one in the gap, they could just keep running till the cows come home. You know, you practice all week with a practice with a scuffed up practice ball, and then you get in the game and they're fresh and clean. And sometimes it's hard to grip them. A little slippery sometimes. Uh, Chance pairs our catcher. He's uh, very, very good at catching the ball. So we're now getting a little nerve wracking. We got no strikes, two balls. 
two outs, the base is loaded. He's going to have to get one in there. A little bit high. When he misses, he's missing high. Yeah. Uh, somebody said that was uh, not pushing off hard enough. I don't know. Yeah, that's if your legs are tired, normally late in the game that starts happening. So three balls and no strikes. This is drilled one right down through there, and batter is taken all the way. Sutter Winslerworth, left fielder, has a chance to drive in some runs here. Ooh, full count. He's come back with two straight strikes. Need one more now. Bow your back. That's what they used to always tell us. Bow your back, whatever that means. Hmm. And walked in a run there. So the bases are still loaded. I don't see a rosin bag behind the mound. Normally if you're... If it's a grip problem, they had a rosin bag back there. You could put a little on your hands, but I don't even know if they still do that anymore. Uh, well, I don't know. I saw one of the Tigers do that the last game I was up here. Trace Hall, short stops up at the bats. Took a good cut, foul one straight back. Over into the girls' softball field, looks like. So gets out in the in a, gets ahead in the count which is really important straight up to the infield and our shortstop cutter Gardner catches it for the third out so after one in, half of an inning Coitas takes a 1-0 lead yeah you don't like to see that happen but sure could have got out of hand right there. Yep. So good job battling back and getting those three outs. Yep. I'm going to go down and uh, straighten up our camera. Okay. I'll talk to you later. They talk a little bit about the history of Tahlequah uh, baseball after we talk about our new coach. Uh, Cody Pear is our new coach. Uh, has been at stints at Red Oak and he was also coaching at Coeta at one time. Uh, been at Adair, uh, born in the Leach area. Went to Little Kansas High School, Northeastern State University. Been a very successful coach. So uh, we're, we're glad he's here and uh, got the boys playing hard. And uh, his uh, philosophy is to play some really top-notch teams and. Uh, you know, you, you win some, you lose some, you play the hard teams, you, you know what to expect, how, how hard you have to work. So that's his philosophy. They, they uh, were 0-3 this weekend in a Carl Albert tournament, but uh, out, all three uh, teams were outstanding. Uh, so right now, Tigers are coming to bat, and um, we're in a three-way tie in District 4. Uh, Sapalpa, McAllister, and Tahlequah are all tied for the lead. And uh, we're getting close to the end of the season, and we'd like to host a regional here. And uh, so it, it, a lot of that depends on whether we can beat Coeta. Uh, we'll play them here, and then we'll travel to Coeta tomorrow night. There's the first pitch from the Coeta. is right down the middle for number seven. Cutter's batting 453, uh, playing shortstop for us, having a very good year. And takes another on that little bit outside, so two balls and one strike. Beautiful day for a baseball game. It's a cloudy, so that sun's not in your eyes. Oh, he drills one in the gap. Will it drop? Yes, it does. 
out into uh, right center field and drops in there between the center fielder and right fielder. So we have Cutter on the base. And he now is extremely fast. Uh, so we'll see what happens over there. Chance Pear is up to, up to bat. Uh, he's got a brother playing at uh, Connors uh, State pitcher down there kind of runs in the family and a pickoff throw to first base do you guys know if they using the uh, major league rules as far as cut pickoffs and that kind of stuff doesn't matter all right, we got Sam, uh, Officer Sam, on the PA today. He's uh, he's a wealth of information. I missed that hit. Where'd it go? Uh, right center. A little dropped in. All three hits. Oh my gosh! Woo oh boy, he hit that like a bullet. Forced Cutter out at second base and uh, wild throw to first, so we have a chance on first base with one out. Boy, hit that thing hard. On the screws, as they now say. Right here, center fielder, number 11, Beckett Robinson. Beckett Robinson batting 403 for the year, playing center field. Low outside corner for strike one. Oh, is that going to drop in there? Is that going to drop in there? Yes. <laughs> Hit that one straight up. And uh, the wind got it and just carried it right on past the infielder's grasp in front of the center fielder. Well, that old C and I hit right there. Yeah, that, that should have been an out for sure. Got him out on his front foot, reach in there a little bit. But you know, when you read the paper tomorrow, that'll look like a line <laughs> shot out there. In this crazy game, uh, Chance hit it like a bullet and gets out. It's a funny game. Number five, Northern team up to bat. Yeah, on the difference between hitting 300 and 400 in a short schedule like they have in high school baseball is about, you know, one C&I single a week. It's yeah. not much. Yeah. Good job Good by the catcher yeah. there. So we've, we've got a little action going here. Runners on first and second with uh, one out. Pitchers, uh, pitchers uh, a little wild there on that one. Got to chase there. Uh, yeah, most of the time when you're warming up, you're out of the windup. And then you get somebody on base, you're out of the stretch for the first time. And Sometimes it takes a little while to get your get used to it. Yeah, and, and uh, I've never I've not pitched much, but they said those mounds, all those pitching mounds, are a little different. Good eye there. That was a good eye. Yeah, your landing spot. You know, the pitcher before you could really chew up that dirt and dig a hole in front of you, and it's just a little different than what you do, and it's. It's tough to adjust to it. Yeah, 3-1 count here. Uh, Northerns in charge. Pick out a good one. Chopper to third. That was... Uh, that ground must be hard because that thing hit the ground and bounced way up. I think it hit the plate. Is that what it was? sounded like it. So, runners on second and third. A little hit. We'll get a couple of runs in, usually. 
Yeah, you got speed at second, so it'd be hard on a on a single to the outfield to get him out at home. Batting 446, uh, leading uh, one of the leading hitters. Ooh. Ooh. That was <laughs> that was over the line on the batter's box. That was a good six inches up. You know the the strike zone is bigger in high school baseball, but that was, to me a little outside. <laughs> Just a bit outside, yes. Now how about that one? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a good 16 inches outside. Uh, yeah, if you get to call, go a little farther <laughs> out. They had a big article in the uh, in the internet about the major league umpire. He, he was missing eight inches outside. And He's ready to go home. I guess. Good cut there. Good cut. One ball, two strikes. Well, the fans were ready for him to go home too. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Was it that a uh, West guy? Or there was an uh, Hernandez is another one that's really that's bad. That's probably the one right there. Yeah. So one ball, two strikes. Need a hit here. Yeah, it seems like sometimes he just closes his eyes and guesses. <laughs> some of them is just wildly off. Well, you know, I was reading a book about a major league. Uh, umpire and he was telling a story that uh, in the minor leagues they didn't have lights and so it was getting dark and uh, they threw the ball and uh, oh long drive out to the outfield and the left fielder picks it up anyway they throw a strike the game's almost over it's it's two and two and uh, the uh, umpire called it a strike three game over and the batter says strike you couldn't even see that ball how did you know it was a strike he said well it sounded like a strike <laughs> <laughs> let's get go home let's go home uh, had some good uh, good contact there but it didn't work out for us so at the bottom of the first inning it is Coeda one and top of the second End of the bottom of the one. <laughs> <I should've... laughs> okay, so Coita coming up to bats. And uh, Roscoe Gay coming up to bat. But anyway, uh, Telequal won state championship in 1971. 25 years later, 1976, Tillicoe won it again. And so we were sure hoping that another 25 years that we would get a, another one. It didn't quite work out though. That's kind of right in the middle of COVID, wasn't it? Uh, somewhere back in there. Gosh, I hated that. We had, uh, who was that? left-handed pitcher that was so good Seth uh, Seth 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 something yes Seth was on his way to the school record for the total number of uh, wins and then they canceled the season I just hated that everything about COVID I hated there you go starting it off well I got to stay home from work for two weeks I guess that was good other than that, pretty boring. There well, that you had go. some movement to it. Yeah, I don't know if that's a curveball or a slider or just a moving fastball. It's jumped out to a 2-0 lead here. That's a little bit high. Two balls, one strike. Diving kept it in the infield. Uh, Coita is not getting fooled by those pitches. Right. For Coita, four, those two innings in really got the lead off on. Yeah. Landon 
Fisher up to bats here. So we got uh, Eli Gibson on third base and uh, Gardner shortstop, Trammell second, and Northington at first. That's our infielders. I'd like to see a double play here. So uh, Northern State at first on that bunt attempt. That means our pitcher is going to have to cover that that bunt on the first base side. See if he can do it. Mm. They haven't had much luck on their bunting today. Two balls, one strike. He's fallen behind again. <laughs> the spectator must have said something. <laughs> they were probably saying, you called it for them, call it for us, too. You mean they were dropping it on the fish? I can't believe it. Oh, no. No. There you go. Two and two on the count. That's four bun attempts, and... Haven't even fouled one off yet. Yeah. Got a lot of movement on the ball, apparently, or making it hard to bunt it. So two and two, nobody out. Runner on first base. Let's see if we can get a double play here. Or a strikeout. That's a third K for um, our pitcher. Uh, got some good, good movement on the ball. I wish I would have known more about baseball when I was in high school, but whenever you've got a threat to steal on first, your first couple pitches are more than likely going to be fastballs because they're anticipating. Eh. Jacob Morrison makes the play in foul territory. Good, I had a long run on that, made a nice, nice play. Battling the wind the whole way. Um, that's when we're really glad there's clouds. That would have been, <laughs> sun would have been right in his eyes. So we have two outs there. Long fly ball. And Jackson Plyer up at the... Little quick swing there. Two away, runner on first base. Right, now, if you think the runner on first is, is going, this is another fastball. But if you don't think he is, you may call another off-speed pitch here. Or throw it first base. Get me one of these Telequa hats. Those are pretty cool. Hmm. Man, that glove popped. He, he had some extra. Uh, How hard do you think he's throwing? 87, 88? Well, it's hard to say. I don't know. The way that glove popped, it was, I'm sure it was every bit of that. He's got a pretty good little changeup to go with that. It yeah, looks like his changeup's got a lot of downward movement. Uh, maybe a. It's also got a slider and a curveball I've seen. Yeah, two and two here. Mm, there we go. Punched him out on the outside corner. He kept uh, going out there. Finally got the call. I believe that's his fourth strikeout in uh, two innings. So, what is it, Craig? Going into the bottom of the second. There you go. One to nothing, Coeta, and uh, Tigers looking to take control of this game. Tell 
Umpqua's got a, a good team, but they're, they've got a really good mixture of sophomores, freshmen, and juniors and seniors. Yeah, they're not senior laden. They're not freshman laden either. Right. right. What were you going to say? Uh, something expounding. You were going yeah. to expound. Speaking of hats, we went to the NSU quarterback club uh, meeting. They had some really cool hats there for people that were joining the quarterback club. And now that that's out in the open, uh, there for a while they they didn't really want to say anything because they weren't sure they was going to come back. But judging by the number of people that were there at that meeting, I think it's going to be a success. So I'd really like to see NSU start to uh, do some things. They still have to keep the same MIAA schedule this year, but they, they're they uh, coming up this year, but they've changed three games, so they've changed three. Uh, next year, so this coming year will be 24. Next year, 25, they can, they're fully independent. So we'll see if we can't rebuild that program. Sinjin Sampson's up to uh, bat, and uh, I'd like to say hello to his sister Erin. She cleaned my teeth this morning and works up at the Indian Hospital, so does a wonderful job. Woo, boy. Oh, man. Line drive out to second base, speared on a running catch. I thought that was in there, Craig. Well, so far, the difference is the game is they're hit to second. Number 15. Found some grass and ours have been gobbled up. Yep. Yep. Eli Gibson, he's one of our football players, isn't he? So Sinjin, so's the Beckett, so's Jacob Morrison. Did I miss anybody? No, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Cutter Gardner. Yep. Yeah. Cutter played some safety. Eli was fullback tight end. Yeah. So, uh, he, Eli's got two balls and uh, no strikes. So he can pick out, a, pick out a good one here. The, uh, that Coleta pitcher is not fooling many of us, but uh, we're just having hitting it right at him. Uh, they said that's what happened last week when McAllister beat us. They just hit it right at him. So bad luck. Oh, three and one on uh, that pitch. He was trying to influence up, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Full count here. That was that call we were looking for earlier. Yeah, that was an uh, outside corner there. Good cut. And the first strikeout for the Coeta pitcher. Connor Taylor's doing well right now. Who's batting, Craig? Oh, uh, the pitcher, Kelly. Kelly. Oh, got God. Well, this is our first uh, broadcast of the season for the baseball. Tomorrow night we'll be right back here again uh, broadcasting the, the uh, girls' softball game. So I hope you uh, join us again tomorrow. We hope. Supposedly a little weather is coming in. Tonight. Yeah, I hope it dries out before. It's supposed to be over in the morning. Mm. Boy, he's, get, he's getting that outside call now. A low outside. Ladies and gentlemen, I think two go with the Obviously looking for something else, kind of frozen.
That one was a little farther outside than the others. I never did understand why an umpire would walk, 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 walk. You know, some umpires are, you just have to have it just perfect to get a call. And I'm thinking, they get paid the same amount, whether they're out there five hours or out there two hours. Well, it's, so I, I, I never understood that. Some people have some character, I guess. <laughs> yeah, keep the integrity of the game intact here. Yeah. Hey, uh, Beerman Davis, uh, one of our sponsors here, and he played in 1955, uh, six, and seven for the Telequa Tigers. They were called Central back then, but Central Tigers. And uh, Beerman's very successful in uh, real estate and uh, nursing home business. <clears throat> he was a career uh, 400 batter and played shortstop for the Tigers. It was just, uh, just a multitude of country boys that play ball all the time and come in here and just did ex exceptionally well for the Tigers. Boom. Nice throw. Number five, Connor Barnett. Third baseman pitched it over to the first base and about hit him in the face. He wasn't ready for it. Uh, all right. It's got kind of a unique uh, wind up there. Right. Who we got here? Connor Barnett. Walked last time. Woo! Line one right back up the middle. Beckett picks it up, fires it back second base. Lead off man in three straight. How about it for Coweta, number yeah, four, that's five, not a good uh, way to win you. games. I don't know if I don't know if anything feels as good as hitting a baseball just perfectly. It is a good feeling. It is, and it's very difficult to do, isn't it? When you don't feel it, you hear it. That is a great feeling. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't say that anymore. They attempted to bunt it, and they t fouled it off. So, uh, one for five. One for five that they've actually touched the ball. So we'll see what he, what he does here. That's a safe pitch. He'll be coming up here throwing you out of the ball game. <laughs> oh, gosh. Maybe a, a little high, maybe. Just a bit outside. Oh, that was a very nice ball. Nice ball. Eli come firing in. Did everything right except grab the ball. So, runners on first and second with nobody out. A walk and an error. I don't know if you call that an error or not. It would have been bang bang at first if he would have. It would have been. Those are, all, those are always scary because that third baseman picks up and fires wild. It's going to go down the right field corner. He may get inside to Parker on, on that play right there. It's not real sharp, is he? Uh, not real sharp. But he's a battler. He is going to give it all he's got. Yeah, you can see the movement, the velocity. He's got a lot of things going for him. A lot of times, you know, just that's enough to get you by. Yeah.
And if you're a hitter facing someone that throws hard that's a little bit wild is a lot harder than facing someone that has their control. You're not worried. Taking one in the ear hole every once in a while, having that fear in your head. <laughs> yeah. You, you have to be very brave to be a baseball player. You get hit, and you can shake it off, get back up there again. Some people can't shake it off. They've always got that fear. Ouch. Ouch. Pass the ball. So runners move up uh, 90 feet. Got second and third, nobody out. And one strike, two balls. The same situation in the first inning. Yeah, we're just making it really hard on ourselves. Keep putting those runners on base. I think he did that last time, did he? Mm-hmm. He hit that one on top of the practice facility. On top of our new building. Wow. Dented the roof. Yeah. You're going to have to pay for that. Sam, we need to put some seats up on the building over there. That would be reserved seats. <laughs> Sell those suckers for top dollar. Yeah. That was a good piece of hitting right there. He stayed back on that curveball. That was a slow curveball. Yeah, and the catcher's telling our pitcher that, too. So what do they do when they go out on the mound and talk like that? Are they trying to make dinner plans? They where, could be. Where they eat? <laughs> they could be talking about the signs. They could be talking about how to approach this guy. They could be talking about dinner. Yeah. Always you know? wondered about that. Sometimes you just need to think about something else for a second and clear yeah. your mind. Yeah, I was an outfielder, so we were looking at the girls while they were doing that. <sighs> Full count here. Full count. Outfielders are very shallow, so if he gets a hold of one, uh, that wind's going to help him. So our infields uh, playing deep. They're going to give up a, a run here to try to get an out. Oh, blew that one by him. That's his second uh, strikeout of the game. First out of this inning. Now back for Cole Weaver, number three, Sutter Winsworth. Sutter with Winsworth. Three on his uniform. Boy, that's a good bunt. Got a run in, sacrifice bunt there. So uh, two away, and that brings in the second run. So Tahlequah is down 2-0 right now. Anybody out there remember when the baseball field was down uh, where the pictorial press is now, Tahlequah Daily Press? Used to have the baseball field there. Um, if you're really into trivia, you remember the uh, fish ponds across the street where the... Uh, <laughs> shopping center is in Naples. That used to be the fish ponds. Fish hatchery. Someone was telling me that someone used to hit it in those ponds. Yeah. Yeah. Hit it over the left field fence, over the street, into the ponds. And they'd, they'd say, feed the fishes. Feed the fishes. They want them to hit a home run. Yeah. I've heard that story, too. That's pretty cool. Way before my time, though. <laughs> I think they closed that down in 1957. Oh, no. That one's going to be trouble. Oh, oh just foul. <laughs> Ooh. 
That wind was trying to hold it up there. Yeah, Jacob Morrison threw a long run. He about got to that. Almost made a catch. Uh, did Ryan get that? No. He's just keeping it the same? Yeah. Well, uh, I know that's uh, disappointing for you folks at home, but at least you're able to see the pitcher and the infielders. Uh, when we had it up here in the press boxes, it was uh, tough to watch the game. Yeah, that was another good. He stayed back on that. Two balls, two strikes. Two Curve ball and just drove it to right field. Yep. Two and two. We need a big punch out right here. We just been very disciplined. Yeah, just a little bit high on that one. Runner on third base here. A pass ball or a hit. They'll score a run, possibly. Three and two. Hmm. A little bit low. A little bit low. Now back for Coweta, number eight, Roscoe Gay. Roscoe. Yeah, I would have loved to have played where you can have all the shin guards and elbow guards. That would have been armored up, let me tell you. <laughs> I got hit more than anybody. I was just a little bitty guy. I don't know why I got hit so much. Straight back over the score uh, press box. One strike. Probably because you was mouthing them all the time. <laughs> I, I was too scared to mouth anybody, at least at the plate. Uh, trick pick off. That thing worked 50 years ago. It still still works sometimes. Yeah. Try to throw it third and then turn around and throw it first. He don't have to grant that. I mean, the guy was in his man, starting his pitch, and they, he granted it. It's aggravating as a pitcher. Well, as a runner too, yeah, run all the way over there, and run back. Of course, when you're 16, you never get tired, so he didn't care. One and one is the count here with two outs. We need a good pitch. Need some good pitches here. Hmm. <laughs> he's high, he's low, he's in, he's out. Hard to hard to get in a rhythm here. Had a runner picked off uh, in the middle between first and second and uh, threw it to the base and we dropped it. So you always run them back. You never run them, let them to advance a base, and that's exactly why. If he would have ran to running back to first there, that's, that's your goal. You don't yeah. want him to go to second. Yeah. And that's exactly why. And possibly he waited too long to throw it, possibly. This this seems like such a simple game, but there's so much to baseball. Holy he mackerel. called that one. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> uh. Well, we'll definitely take it. This is Roscoe Gray. I missed a batter here somewhere. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's a good arm from the outfield there to save a run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he 
fired one right down right. the middle, and Roscoe Gay sent it right back yeah. out. You know, uh, almost every hit Coita's had has been right back up the middle. That, that's a good, good hitter. That'll take it back up the middle. Yeah, if you start trying to pull something, you're putting yourself in a disadvantage because you need a certain pitch to do that. If you think up the middle, it's it's a lot easier to move something to right field or pull it. Yeah. Calling that outside again. All right, we needed that one. So, halfway through the third inning, what's the score here? Three nothing, Coeda. Well, middle of the third. <laughs> middle of the third, six strikeouts for Kelly. Uh, and uh, you can see he's got some good stuff. First time I've seen him pitch. We uh, we were playing a game one time. We got a new pitcher. He's a left-handed guy. None of us had ever seen him pitch before. He gets out there. And just starts mowing people down. He threw hard for a lefty. He threw really hard. First three innings, he had nine strikeouts. I don't even know if he threw a ball. And I don't think he got another out the rest of the game. <laughs> really? <laughs> we, we got beat like by 12 runs or something. I don't know. But he was never the same after that. I don't know what he had going for him in those three innings, but too bad he didn't keep it. <laughs> Well, you know, adrenaline and focus. Uh, couldn't get it back, could he? No. All right. Got to get something going here. You're talking about uh, Oaks. You're from Oaks, played ball at Oaks. Frank Smith lives at Oaks, one of the all-time greats here at Tahlequah. Played with his son, Bert. Yeah. Bert was a really good ball player. Yeah. Frank's in our Hall of Fame. Played at OU, uh, at Northeastern. All state in football and bas uh, baseball, both. You remember those leggings players used to wear? That one should get foul. It did. It did. Uh, so the leggings were like a little, just started at your knee it went down around your heel and it was just I don't know what the point of it was it was just a st vertical strike basically stirrup yeah uh, we were playing and Bert got a hit running to first and somehow that thing come out of his shoe and uh, he tripped over it fell and broke his arm that was the craziest thing that would be bad luck, wouldn't it? But I was playing second at the time, and then because he got hurt, I moved to first. Got to play first for a little bit. I'll, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Tate Trammell just uh, barely ticked that and stayed alive. Uh, so we've got no balls and two strikes. First base is dangerous. Get yeah. run over, you can really get hurt over there playing first base. Hmm. Got him on a curveball. Boy, I hate to say it, that's three strikes in a row for the three strikeouts in a row for that pitcher. He's well, starting to get going here on us. He's working that outside corner. He's figured that one out. Yeah. Uh, starting all over with our lineup. Cutter Gurner, I'd like to see him hit one, watch him run. He's he can really scoot. So Cutter's batting uh, 453. And uh, 
Probably more than that since he got a hit the first time. Good curve ball there. Consistent. As long as you're consistent. This guy's throw. I mean, he's spotting the ball really well. Yep. Uh, coach was showing me the the dirt out there it is not actually well. It's clay that's been baked. It's a bunch of little bitty clay pellets. Uh, it's kind of neat looking. We got seam run. He about beat that one out. Uh-oh, we're going to have an argument here. I kind of agree with that one. I thought he was safe. I wonder what uh, Christian thought over there, our first base coach. Oh, he thought he was safe. He knew he did. <laughs> now, buddy, for Tahlequah, number four, Chance Harris. Well, I sure thought he was safe. We need instant replay. It's amazing how often those major league umpires get it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, just by an inch. So, two away. Chance pair our catcher up to bat. I've heard of good things about him. Uh oh. Left fielder trying to track it down, and he did. Gave it a good long ride, but turned out to be the third out of the inning. So after three full innings of play, it is. Three to nothing. Coeda favor. Nineteen seventy one, uh, Telequal won the state baseball championship, and there's a lesson to be learned from that. That group of boys, uh, when they were sophomores. Were one and 18. They won one game and lost 18. And uh, they kept practicing and practicing and growing and getting stronger. Juniors, they were about 500, and you could see the improvement. And then uh, their senior year, they were 18 and two, and uh, they won the state championship. Uh, but I'll tell you, to win a state championship, you've got to be good, but you also got to be lucky. Uh, have your breaks go your way. Uh, had two outstanding pitchers that year, Ronnie Hamby, a left-hander with a great curveball, and uh, Doyle Green, Jr., uh, who, uh, tremendous fastball. He went ahead and played for Montreal, uh, Expo minor league and uh, Ronnie played for the University of Arkansas and uh, leading off the top of the four, these guys could throw that two, ball. Connor Dickie Sellers, longtime coach here at Telequa was on that team. Steve Black, uh, Steve Adams, uh, Doty Dirt Eater, uh, Robbie Franks, Coach Bart Franks' brother, Mike Wheeler, who's, who's passed on, but he was a great player had a really good uh, bunch of players all right laid down a bunt Eli Gibson made a great play on that one threw him out by a couple of steps
But anyway, if you keep a good attitude and work hard, good things will happen. One and one on the count, call strike to Jackson Plyer. He's your center fielder. Boy, uh, it's very difficult to catch a fly ball. Very difficult to judge it. If you've never tried it, it looks so simple, but it's it's not. Yeah, and you have to learn how to run a certain way where it's not jarring your eyes. Yeah, you can't be flat-footed, pounding around like a Clydesdale. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> to me, that looks outside, but he's calling it for both teams. <clears throat> so that's all you can ask. You know? Yeah, right now their pitcher is doing a great job finding that location. There it Ooh. is. Hit it again. That's his seventh strikeout. Coming to the plate, number five, Connor Barnett. Connor Barnett. So we got... Uh, Two quick outs here, which is a good. Is that the first inning they hadn't put their leadoff batter on? It is. Sure makes the rest of the inning easier. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. You come out of the dugout and you're automatically, you got a runner on, you kind of get a little nervous. So, two and two is the count. And uh, two outs. Deuce is wild. Right down the middle for his eighth strikeout, Craig. Four innings, eight strikeouts. Uh, it's finding that groove now. Yeah, he, that was the best inning by far there. So, Tigers coming up to bat, uh, trailing three to nothing. And uh, definitely not insurmountable lead here. And uh, that uh, 1996 uh, state championship baseball team uh, started playing together as, as a little league and. Uh, when they were 12 years old, they won the state Little League Championship and went up to Indianapolis uh, for the regionals and almost won there. If they'd won there, they'd have gone on up to the Little League World Series. So pretty exciting time. And when they won the state championship, they they didn't sneak up on anybody because they were, I think, 29-2 and two that year. Just about every baseball record is, is with that team. Uh, leading home run hitter that year. Oh my gosh, I don't even know who it was. Talbert uh, Matlock, Tr uh, Atkins, might have been Atkins, I'm not sure. Very good players there. Had two or three All Staters on that team. I think they had the school record for the victories in one year is 11 wins pitching. And uh, I think they had two that year that won, maybe three that won 
No, it was two. Yeah, one eleven. All right. Back at Robinson up. Waiting for him to get a hold of one. I've seen him hit two home runs here. I'm hoping he'll get his third one right now. track me <laughs> getting ready for the track me <laughs> boy he just barely missed he's been calling that all game that was close yeah it was i don't see anybody from telequal looking to go to right field on that pitch they're either they're letting it go or they're swinging over the top of it trying to pull it to left Speed, speed. That was a easy out, and he had to rush it like crazy to try to beat Beckett over there, and that's what happens. Now, how's he doing on stolen bases this year? I know he's got a lot of speed. You know, I, I don't know. I, I talked to uh, Miss Pear, coach's wife, all ago. She gave me some stats, and I didn't get that one. I don't know if they're. So he's got a good lead over there. He does. That looked like a slow pitch, uh, fast, uh, I mean a fast pitch softball swing. Well, there's your answer, Craig. He can steal bases. He can. I, I'm not saying I could have stole that one. It would have been a close play. But in the old days, that ball would have went off the pitching rubber and came right back at him because <laughs> it just glanced over the top of the mound. Well, it's a good thing that pitcher got out of the way. He'd have been beamed upside the head. Or maybe the kneecap. That didn't get very high. Oh. So, I'll say, good thing he... <laughs> I was thinking he might have scored on that one. That fella's quick. You know, you watch him on a football field, and he it's just... He's just so much faster than other players. Uh, it just really standing out and I never had that at all so I'm, it's a good thing to have so we have a runner on third base nobody out this is our best scoring opportunity of the game here a pass ball often will bounce right back to the catcher it will hit that wall so you got to be careful some places, if it gets by the catcher, it's just automatic, you know, but not here. Well, there's not much room behind home plate. No. Where was it? Yankee Stadium? It's about, it looked like it's about 200 feet back there. Yeah, it was. It was farther to the the backstop than it was to the pitcher's mound for the. <laughs> wow. Well, that looked kind of high. Three balls, one strike. Get a hold of one here. And Beckett comes in on the pass ball. That on only made, pitch. <laughs> that made it, what, 15 feet? And he, he made it look easy. Easy. It is easy when you're that fast. Uh, he's the uh, leadoff runner on the relay team for the Telegraph High School track. Sam, are, is, are they on the 400 or the quarter mile relay? So they're on the 4 by 100 sprinter relay. You can sure tell it there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Great hit right there by number. Who is that? It was Eagle, wasn't it? 
eagle, yeah, 446. I can see why he's batting 446. Great swing, left-hander. Right on the money. So here we go. We got something going. Uh, three to one's a score. There's still nobody out. Runners on first and second. First baseman is way in anticipating a bunt, I guess. Sinjin Sampson's up to bat. He's, uh, his grandpa uh, was a Tahlequah Tiger, played for Northeastern baseball and football, coached at Keys for many years. And uh, that's an athletic family. Trying to throw behind the runner at second. Sedgen's grown a lot. It looks like he's, what, 6'3 now? Uh, or a backup quarterback on the football team. It's hard to tell from above. Telqua's got some tall, tall type boys. Still nobody out. Runners on first and second. Ball, two strikes, a little bun attempt went foul. Yeah, I haven't seen the show bun pull it back and hit it when you got somebody that's 30 feet from you. It's not a bad, you know, it'll sure make them back up a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a scary play. I've seen some awful stuff happen in baseball. And uh, swinging strike three for the first out of the inning. Now by for Tahlequah, number 15, Eli Gibson. Eli, get a hold of one, Eli. He's batting 275 for the year. Runners on first and second. We need a hit here. that little curveball in there. You taking something off that or is that just his curveball speed? Well, I don't know. Well, we got a pretty good ball game going here. <laughs> that shortstop is holding the runner on and then right before the pitch he sprints to his position. Gonna be a tired boy. <laughs> He's making a lot of runs there. Good cut. Good yeah, he did cut. take something off that one. Yeah. One ball, one strike, one out. One ball, two strikes now. Oh, okay. You're right. A little late putting it up there. There's two outs. Runner still on first and second. We can sure treasure a hit right here. And strike one called there. Keep our fingers crossed for a hit. There it is. There it is. I'm gonna hold him up. Yeah, good wrap right between shortstop and third base. And uh, the left fielder is playing in so close and couldn't score. So the bases are loaded on a single by Levi Kelly. So we got Tate Trammell up. Now by for telephone. Number three, Tate Trammell. 
one of my former students uh, back in the day. Good to see him playing for the Tigers. A little behind that fastball. Yeah, a little behind. Something off speed here. Go, 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 go. He may beat this one out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a little dribbler off the end of the bat. God, didn't even get out of the infield grass, but they were playing so deep. Good job, Tate Trammell. Got us a run in there. Number seven, Cutter Gerker. Oh, boy, here we go. Got one of our best, well, actually, he does have the best average anybody up to plate here. Three to two is the score. Base is loaded, two outs. We've got our runner coming in here. Coming on the run with the Tigers, number 12, Harry. Handley. He's a freshman. His dad's the president of Northeastern State University. Designated runner here. A little bit high, I guess. Two outs, but he's he got a hit to start off the game, and forced out at second, and then he was called out on a very controversial play at first. We still believe he was safe. <laughs> very controversial. I knew as soon as that left his hand what that was. Telequel is just not. Can you pick up his motion? You know what he's going to throw? Yeah, it's getting there. I'm sure the telequel hitters are starting to see it too. You know, baseball players have spent a lot of time watching that pitcher, trying to figure out any way tell what he's going to pitch, you know, how they hold the ball, how they hold their glove. Um, you know, they're trying to pick up some sign where he's going to throw that curveball or a fastball. Some pitchers can tele telegraph it. You can pick them up. I would, I would urge you to swing at anything close. That one was a lot closer than it looked because of his the way he's calling that strike zone. Yeah. And I'm not saying high? he's wrong, but from here it looks outside. Yeah. Looked a little bit high. Three and two, runner's going to be going on the pitch. There they go. Mm. That's going to oh, drop. Oh, is it going to drop? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yes. And Cutter advances to second. Had a blooping liner out shortstop made a valiant attempt on it but it glanced off his glove he's running with his back to the infield and uh whoo, boy that got us a couple of runs in just like that craig we take the lead and that will look like a line shot yeah. in the newspaper yeah that's a tough when you directly behind you trying to find the ball and if you can run to the side and look at the side it's a lot easier but yeah. when it's directly behind you that's tough yeah and if you're an outfielder when they hit a line drive right at you those are hard to judge too yeah i, I was playing softball one time in the outfield and the guy hit a line directly at me and i bet that thing was and it was knuckling there was no spin at all, but I bet it was breaking five, six feet each time it knuckled, you know? <laughs> that was the wildest thing. Uh, Did you catch it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. 
We still got a runner and two runners in scoring position. A great hitter up at the bat here. He's he's uh, put some good contact on it. Lefty against the right-handed pitcher. He's he's at an advantage right now. And that right fielder is playing very close. Yeah. If you get a good good fly ball, it'll probably get over his head. No, there's no warning track here. I just now noticed that. Uh, there may be. Well, I don't know. Ooh. Ooh, he, he wanted it. He wanted it. One and one's the count. One ball, one strike. Two outs. Two runners in scoring position. A, a good hit will more than likely score two runs. So we're hoping for a good hit. Went for a low outside one, didn't quite get it. So one ball, two strikes, two outs. Pitcher's thrown a lot of pitches. I wonder if he's getting tired. There, fouls one off the left field. Foul territory. Whoever that is over there has gotten three hit right at him. That one's going to roll all the way off the hill. <laughs> the little kid that was way away is going to get to it before him. <laughs> what a good game. I, we have really picked a, a, a game to watch. Got to get him chase again there. That makes me nervous the way those ref, uh, umps call it that. has helped us out with a few I don't know if they were errors but really tough plays oh got him with the curveball yep caught him looking and we're going to take a break here and be right back on the Green Country Sports Network if you suffer with foot pain you should consider getting your feet adjusted by a hand and foot chiropractor hi my name is Dr. Kelly Calloway and I'm a hand and foot chiropractor in Tahlequah Oklahoma there are 26 bones in each foot all of which can be adjusted. When one or more of the foot bones lose their healthy alignment, it can lead to a foot problem. We help conditions such as plantar fasciitis, heel spurs, and toe pain. A gentle chiropractic foot adjustment will restore healthy alignment and function to the joint and tissues in the feet. This will correct the underlying cause of most foot conditions. Our patients love having their feet adjusted, and you will be amazed by how good you will feel after you have your feet adjusted. Call our office today to receive your complimentary consultation for your painful foot condition. And we are back. We got a barn burner going here with uh, Telequa Elite Coweta 4 to 3 in the top of the fifth. Uh, our pitcher's going into his fifth inning. Yeah, he's uh, got a lot of movement on his ball. He's uh, had, uh, I think, eight strikeouts in four innings. He's uh, four for four wins, one loss for the season. Has a 1.75 earned run average. And uh, he was making it tough on himself earlier. Those three runs came with... Uh, yeah, I, would, of, I don't think any of them were earned. A lot of walks and uh, uh, getting behind on the count. Had a, had a lot uh, better inning last inning. Yeah, let's just get this first out here. Make it easy on ourselves. Dr. DeHughes. He's a stout looking young man. <laughs> you know, sometimes those will spin and come back. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to put a little chalk on the end of that bat there <laughs> yes hey i've seen one of those hit uh 10 feet behind home base and uh roll right back out to the pitcher well there's an incredible amount of spin on those yeah. cue shots yep. i think that's the second time i've seen him try to throw that 12-6 curveball and that one didn't didn't get over the last one did so one and one on the count yep he likes that, Hump likes that spot right there. 
Yeah, I would just work that outside corner every pitch. He's shaking him off. He's uh, well. He's moved outside. Uh oh. Uh oh. Cutter's calling it. Little pop up there. <coughs> Those are not easy with the wind blowing. No. No. But it's kind of slacked off a little no, bit. It's down to about 50. Uh, <laughs> this, this has been the windiest spring <laughs> every day. Uh. Now this guy, big boy like this, he's giving you that strike. I just go inside every time. <laughs> that was middle of the plate. It must have been low. He's telling the catcher what what was wrong with that one. Same same type of pitch. Pitcher's not too happy about those call right there. He gets those arms extended well, you, out there. That one was scary because the catcher was set up outside, and that one drifted back over the middle. He could have really, he was right on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Setting up outside again. Two and two. There it is. Right down the middle. Wasn't expecting that off speed there. Who's that, nine? Strikeout number nine, yes. Wow. Pretty impressive, isn't it? You know, your your favorite major leaguer uh, pitched down the road. Who's that? Helsley. Oh, Ryan Helsley, yeah. And uh, they said he was throwing in the uh, upper 80s in high school, mid 80s. Now he's... For a while last year, he had the fastest pitch in the major leagues, was like 104.7 or something, yeah. something crazy like that. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. Uh, uh, we text each other every once in a while. And Dustin Knight's another telequal player that played Baltimore Orioles. So, yeah, and there was a guy from Locust from that was playing for Milwaukee. Hauser. Yeah, him and him and. Uh, Archie Bradley. Him and Hillsley actually pitched against each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's so wild. St. Louis playing Milwaukee, and there's, you know, guys 20 miles apart play, pitching against each other. Yes. Yes. My first year of uh, full count, two outs. My first year of teaching, I was at Spavanaugh. I lived about a block from Mickey Mantle's birthplace. And, uh, oh, and came up with a walk. Commerce Comet. Commerce. So that puts a tying run on base uh, with two outs. You know, he had an amazing career, but you just wonder what if, if he hadn't hurt his knee. He played for 18 years with a torn ACL the entire time. Yeah. They had the doctors they have now. It been a different story. Oh, man. Chance here. That was a great stop there. Very good fundamentals. Get your body out there. Smother that thing. So two outs. One ball, no strikes. Hit and run, and fortunately, he fouls one off. Trying to manufacture a run here in, in the uh, fifth inning. I think this is going to be a seven-inning game, if I'm not mistaken. Are they not all seven innings? I don't know. Ooh. Blew that one right by him, a high hard one. So we have two strikes, one ball, two outs. I'd like to get it 
out of here, and we got some some of our good hitters coming up. It's kind of interesting the way that first baseman's standing there. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or not. That's uh, not the way they did it back in the 1920s, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, got him. Chance pair. Got rid of that one quick. Great job, catcher. And we're going to take another break here on the Green Country Sports Network. Are you a fitness beginner who is struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried tons of different diets, but nothing seems to work. Maybe you're looking in the mirror, you're not happy about the reflection that's staring back at you. At Elevated Aesthetics, we help fitness beginners learn how to lose 15 to 20 pounds in six months or less, guaranteed without having to give up their favorite foods. On average, each client that joins loses at least 28.6 pounds inside of the program. So if you're interested, text INFO to 918-265-265. 4477. That's 918-265-4477. Chat soon. And welcome back to the Green Country Sports Network. We're going into the bottom of the fifth. And uh, just came off of a four-run inning. Take the four-to-three lead over the Coeta Tigers. And uh, uh, if Coach is correct, uh, if we can hang on to this as We'll be hosting a regional if, if we can uh, win this game. Uh, Tahlequah, Sepulpa, and McAllister are tied for the district lead with one se week left in the season. And uh, Coita's fourth, so got some really good ball games right here. Two good teams. And who's who we got warming up over there, Craig? Number 22. I really thought they would make a change going into this inning, but uh, it's like we're going to stick with our starter. Well, you know, that fourth inning was really, uh, when we scored those four runs, uh, two batters that haven't had a whole lot of success came through with us uh, with good hits. Well, that was really good to see. You need that. You, you can't get by with four or five players. you got to have nine. Yeah, and this guy right here, got it started with a leadoff hit. Is this Beckett again? Yeah, and really, really caused some havoc on a base pass. Oh, he did. He, he is quick. Check down to first. Said he didn't go around. Man, I hadn't seen that in high school much. So, ball one. Uh, it's amazing uh, if you've got no strikes, your batting average is like close to 300. One strike, it goes down. Two strikes, it's down in the 100s. Uh, it's really important to get ahead like Beckett is. Yeah, that's why one of the most underrated players was Tony Gwynn, and his batting average was just as high with two strikes as it was with no strikes. Yeah. He was a excellent hitter. That's... Uh, Unusual to be able to do that, though. Uh, he didn't like that one, and uh, that's okay. Three and oh, you pick one out you like. So three and one's a count, nobody out. And uh, I'd like to see him get one in the gap. Watch him run here. Well, we may get to watch him run anyway. Watch him run anyway. So he draws a walk. Oh, look at Ryan go. I was going to tell him to get the camera over there to cover first base, and he moved it on his own. Good job, Ryan! <laughs> Boy, when he, he can be six, seven, eight feet from the just lay down. He's he's there. He's a pretty tall young man. Northington. I s <laughs> they had a video going around of a hidden ball trick from New Jersey. It was pretty cool. And off to headache. Little foul ball for strike one. There are some really neat trick plays uh, in baseball. And the crowd moves. 
Wichita State first. The one I remember was Wichita State versus OSU in the College World Series. OSU gets a guy on base that has whatever, 40 steals on the season, something like that. They do the hidden ball trick down the first baseline. The pitcher stands there like, oh, I can't do it. I can't believe I did that. He starts running to second. The pitcher calmly flips it to second. <laughs> yeah. Gets him out at second in the College World Series. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That one. That one was hard to watch. They've got some good ones. Oh, good hit. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, he's still trying to get him. That was, thank you very much. And the right fielder throws it all the way to home. Northington just stayed with that pitch and just stuck his bat out there in line one to right field. Drove in Beckett Robinson with the fifth run of the ball game. Craig, that was outstanding. Yeah, most time you try to swing hard on that, you roll over the top of it and just jam it down in the ground. Yeah, and right fielder uh, made a mistake uh, trying to throw it home. Well, he hadn't had a lot of opportunities to show off his arm, so he was trying to. No, and we got a new pitcher coming in the ball game. Number two, uh, Connor Taylor. He, he did a nice job. Number 22 is in in the game. And Alex Crawford is in the bat. Thank you, Sam. Alex, uh, not bat, but pitch. Alex Crawford. He's a flamethrower, he's a little wild right now on his warm up. <laughs> if I'm sitting over in the dugout. I'm going to the plate hitting left handed right now. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's coming right through that right handed batter's box. Yeah. <laughs> trying to, is he throwing a sidearm? A little bit. He's got a, a three quarter motion, but he really starts out wide. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be left-handed there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Alec Crawford. Alec Crawford. The odds that he doesn't hit somebody are not very good right now. <laughs> but then again... Luckily for us, Ryan Eagle is a left-handed batter. That, Got a runner on second. A little psychology, just winging it in there every time. Yeah. The uh, Northington's not the fastest runner we've got. So it's taken a pretty good hit to score him, I think. And I'm not familiar with high school rules, how many designated runners you can have or anything like that. Well, we've got two down here. Will Talbert and Harry Hanley are designated runners. And uh, ball one. Yeah, he, he's uh, zeroed in on that, that spot on the, just about where the right-handed batter's head would be. Yeah, and his motion is going to lead him to, to that side, the way he's coming off the mound. Yeah. Put a little back spin and kind of spins in back in there a little bit. And we have three and O with nobody out. And uh, doesn't look like he can throw a strike. We'll see. Oh. Now, was that a strike? It looked like he called him on a check swing. Yeah, that was unusual to be swinging like that on a three and O pitch. Yeah, and you, don't have, you can't check it. Down the down the line because the other ump. What? Oh my! What? Oh my! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> He's want to go home.
That's twice he's been right on one and hit it out to center field. Yeah, they caught that one. He got a good hit the last time, but they got that one. So that's the first out of the uh, inning. Still have a runner on second base. He forced a, forced a throw. Could have could have been a wild throw. Yeah, a good I think job if he of base runner. went ahead and kept going, he'd have made it to third on that. But. The way we've got swinging the bats here, you don't want to get an out on the base pass right now. No. No, it's a good cut. Sanjay's been batting well as of late. Number eight, uh, Yogi Berra. That was his number back in the day. You know, when you come to a fork in the road, you should just go ahead and take it. <laughs> There were so many yogiisms out there. That was my favorite one. Yeah, he was. He was. He must spend a lot of time thinking those up. We don't have a clue if those are high or low. No, it's here. really hard to tell. Uh, the crowd wasn't happy with that though. Of course. Probably not going to be happy with anything except a hit here. This guy throws a lot harder than the other one does, looks like. Maybe it's just the motion, I'm not sure. Up the middle, is it going to get through there? Oh. He can get on the base because you cut to the inside there. Bad throw, uh, good hard hit up the middle. Shortstop makes a bad throw over to the. Uh, He's gonna call argue interference or some sort, I think, over there. Uh, and uh, as of right now, Northington scores, depending on the outcome of this argument. Well, he's still at third. Oh, stayed at third. Well, the. Uh, the runner cut to the inside of the base path to miss the fielder, and if he tagged him at any time before he got back on the base, that's an out. And whether or not he did that or not, I don't know. Now we were taught that's why playing first base is so tough because you get run over on that play nine times out of ten. Girls softball has put another base out in foul territory, painted it red, and that's the one the runner has to touch the fielder touches the white one. That is so much sense. That just makes so much sense, and that keeps them from getting hurt like you were talking about. I don't know why they don't go with that. It just makes so much sense. Because you got the base runner lane mm -hmm. in foul territory, but then you have to come in to fair territory to touch the base. Yeah. So that's just... Cuddy by uh, Gibson. Yeah, right now we got runners on second and third, one out, 0 2 count. Well, we need Teleball some, Tigers leading 5 to 3. We need a good hit here. Need some more runs. Never get enough runs. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh man. man. There's no way he gets a bat on that staying in the batter's box. He has to step on the plate to hit that ball. That's crazy. That catcher was leaning way over to even catch the ball. Number 10 up to bat. Morrison in the ball game. That's Levi Kelly hitting right now. Oh, Levi Kelly. I don't think so. He's Number eight. 10. Oh, okay. All right. We need to 
hit here. We do need a hit here. Oh. Check swing. So we get one run in the inning. Uh, lead 5-3, going to top of the six, and we'll be right back on the Green Country Sports Network. Family. It's bigger than bloodlines. Stronger than DNA. It's the circle we draw around the people that matter. The people we care about and care for. Armstrong Bank. Strength runs in our family. And we're back. That was a quick one. That was a quick one. Uh, Veerman Davis has building lots out at uh, Davis Ranch. He has uh, retirement apartments across uh, the Benita. Has Snake Creek Development. And uh, has a lot of opportunities for you all. So go by and check it out. Uh, Laura Lund, State Farm Insurance Agent. We've got all of our stuff insured with them. And we got a new roof. I was going to say, who roofed your house this, literally this morning? Uh, yeah, half a day. Uh, uh, Calvin and Sons. Yeah, they did a great job they getting in and out of there. Job. And uh, my yard looks better than it did before they came. They cleaned it up. Did a great job. Calvin's out at Woodall area, one of our former students. Do a great job. So what do we got? Five three Telequad Tigers in the lead. And, uh, and Levi's been doing a great job the last two innings. Yes, he getting has. Getting ahead, getting that lead runner, or the leadoff runner. Ninety-six when Telequa won the state tournament uh, baseball, they they were down 4-0. Troy Matlock came in and, sh and shut uh, the team down, and Telequa won it right at the end on a double by. I don't even remember who did that, but uh, doubled them up at the last inning. There's a high fly ball out to right field, way up there. Morrison, Jacob Morrison on the catch. Mr. Josh King back here behind us. He's the guy to ask about that 96 team. He knows all that, doesn't he? I was trying to lean into a pitch and got a cold strike. Yeah. Uh, that 96 team was coached by, uh, who was that? Herb Dallas? Herb Dallas. Herb graduated in 1958, played second base for the Tigers, and they were state runner-ups that year, and Norman beat them. Oh, he leaned into that one. Fast forward to 1996, Herb Dallas coaching. They're playing Norman in the finals and beat Norman. So he gets some revenge on them there. Yeah. That was really cool. Now back for Coweta, number 13, Dalton Warren. Dalton Woods. Dalton Woods. back foot on that one, wasn't he? Let's get a double play and get out of this inning. That'd be all right. Yeah. Nice curveball. That was the biggest break I've seen all game long. Oh, Ronnie Hamby, 
that was his forte. He he would throw one about shoulder high, and it'd wind up hitting the dirt just 60 miles an hour. Oh man, he! And I got him again. Strikeout number 10, and two outs. More importantly, now about to throw number two, Connor Taylor. So down with two outs. Craig, that's uh, he's doing a lot better about keeping them off the base, isn't he? Yeah. It, it starts that first batter. Yeah. And I want to remind you again, we'll be right back here tomorrow with uh, broadcasting the uh, Telequal Girls slow pitch game. And uh, looking forward to it. Hope you'll join us for that. He's going to get to third. Oh, he could have went to three. Boy, they had him. They had him. Kind of tag him before he got it, didn't he? Yeah, it looks like Cutter's okay. Took a little spill there. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, Coach Sellers, Dickie Sellers, mm -hmm. That that 90, uh, 71 championship game, he was three for four and uh, boom, three for four and uh, made a diving catch on the final out of the game to uh, preserve that victory. It was one of his best games he ever played, I think. Boy, you can see him coming over now. That curveball's really working right now. Yeah, pitching into the wind, you can really get some hook on that. Nice. That is such a great job of pitching. You get two off-speed pitches over the plate for called strikes and then come back catch him off guard with a fastball uh, we'll be right back we'll take a short break here on the green country sports network family it's bigger than bloodlines stronger than dna it's the circle we draw around the people that matter the people we care about and care for armstrong bank strength runs in our family hello i'm david of green country funeral home the only locally owned funeral home in telequah oh i'm a wife for nita and myself we're also proud to be the only funeral home in the area with an on-site crematory to meet the needs of our community, your families. Our family at Green Country Funeral Home works to assist and guide you through the many details of your family's final needs and wishes. Green Country Funeral Home, where we don't work for a corporation, we work for you. And welcome back to Green Country Sports Network. Uh, the Green Country Sports Network, started by Kelly Callaway and Craig Wing, and uh, their vision that uh, got this started, what, four years ago? This is our third season. Third season, and uh, if it wasn't for those two gentlemen, there would be no football, basketball, baseball broadcast. Uh, so, we if thank it wasn't you. for our sponsors, we wouldn't be doing it uh, anyway. That's right. So we really thank them. Went up to see Bob Ed Culver, uh, Senate uh, representative at the Capitol, and he's one of our sponsors. Been with us since the very beginning, and very nice. Really Treated us really good up there. The alumni of Telequoia hey. and OU. Wow. Yeah. And he's our neighbor down there. Got number three up to bat here for us. Tate Trammell. Tate came up with a, 
very important hit a while ago. Kept that inning alive, got some runs in. Uh, very, very important for him. Yeah, I think right now Telequan needs to be real patient at the plate. Wait on their pitch. I think this guy will walk him if if they let him. <laughs> Three and two, full count here. Grounder to second base and flips it over to first. They got him. Thought that was going to find the gap, but for a minute, the short second baseman made a. There's old Brody. <laughs> the manager at uh, basketball, football, and baseball, I guess. He's a very nice young man. Right up the middle. Can he beat this one out? Nope. That was a real good play by the fielder. Yeah, yeah and he got rid of that right in the rhythm. It didn't, didn't, that's the only way they were able to get him there. So two away very quickly. When he first hit that, I thought, sure, he was going to beat that out. Yeah, I did too. A little foul ball off to the left. Take another break. Be right back on the Green Country Sports Network. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said, <laughs> it wasn't, but this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Casasa cash checking. Casasa cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Casasa cash. Take us as a cash at First State Bank. And we're back. Top of the seventh inning. Telequal Tigers leading five to three. This would be it if we can hold them. There's so many funny stories in baseball. Uh, Little League, uh, Little League, a lot of times they'll just get some young college kid to volunteer you know that's going to be a wants to be a coach so they'll get them to volunteer well they, there was a hot little league game going and uh, this this uh, college kid uh, coach he calls timeout walks out on the mound he tells all the infielders to stay back out there usually they all come into the mound you know yeah. for a little coaching wisdom so he tells him to stay out there, and he walks out to the mound, and he's just he stays on this same side the whole time, all the way out there, where he can watch the stands. He gets out there, and the pitcher says, "What's going on?" Because he doesn't talk to him at all. He's just looking up in the stands. He's he says, he says, "Well, this is a girl I like, and she can't see me when I'm in the dugout." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I don't know the rest of the story whether that worked out for him or not I'm not sure <laughs> oh goodness anyway girls softball has been very successful of all the sports at Telequa that may be the most successful of all of them uh, several state championships well that Behind the press box here, they've got a list of all those all staters, and it's a lengthy list. Yeah. Wrap one up, Cutter Gardner. Cutter's pitching now. Oh, 
that wasn't Cutter. Who was that? Shortstop. Levi, Levi Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Oh, wild throw to first, and Northington made a great uh, – jumped up, caught that ball, and tagged him before he got to the base. Great play. They said Cutter's really coming on. He's got a 1.64 ERA. I know uh, Miss Pear – well, if I was him, I'd have a sore neck. I, he really snaps that head when he pitches. <laughs> Who's this batter, Craig? Can uh, you see the number? Five, I think. Yeah, number five. Good job, Brian. Staying with the camera there. Doing better, isn't he? So one out. <laughs> Every time he whips his head, his hat falls off his head. After every pitch, he's got to pick up his hat. <laughs> so three balls and two strikes. It's important not to get this one on base. Uh oh. Nice little hit there. That was a nice little hit right up the middle. Have they hit any to third base, shortstop, or first base? They hit a couple of shortstop, none to third, none to first. The only one that went to third was on a bunt. They really work on hitting up the middle. Yeah, and they're really disciplined. They don't swing at a lot of wild pitches. They're not helping the pitcher out any. Well, now one swing of the bat can tie the ball game up. That's why it's important to keep that runner off. But there they are, so now we got our work cut out for us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, right down the line all the way to the wall. Left fielder picks it up and fires it in. And a stand-up double. Uh, so runners on second and third. Left fielder did a great job of keeping a runner on third base, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Got that ball in in a hurry and made a good throw. So right now, uh, two runners in scoring position with one out. Now one swing of the bat will put them ahead. Or could. And this guy's fully capable of doing it. Well, that guy turned on that one, just really hit a rope down the left field line. Hunter Day Hughes, he's a big, impressive guy. Just hope he doesn't get a hold of one. Taking something off of that. Yeah, both those pitches were, and both of them were low, and that's where this this umpire is living, is down low in the strike zone. Back inside on that one and got the K. How many strikeouts did uh, Levi end up with? 11? Le Levi ended up with 11, yes, in six innings of work. That's pretty good. Yeah. So two outs, runners at uh, second, third, one now hit will tie the, probably tie the ball game up. So here we are, batter against hitter, hitter against pitcher. Batter against catcher. <laughs> what other cliches can I make up? Your own yogiism. <laughs> Garyisms. Garyisms, yes. Well, he broke a big slow one off there. Oh, who was 
uh, Satchel Paige, one of the all-time greats. Speaking of batter against the pitcher. Fouled it off to the right. You know, earlier we saw a, saw a hitter step out as the pitcher starting his motion. And I remember a story about uh, Bob Gibson, who was another one of my favorite people to hear stories about. He was also a Golden Gloves boxer. So he had no fear of going high and inside on a hitter. No one was going to charge the mound on him. <laughs> His, if you stepped out of the box, if you stepped in the box and he stepped on the rubber, it was coming home. And if you stepped out of the box, when that, the next one was at your head. That was the rule with with Gibson. <laughs> Boy, that was almost the game. He just barely clicked that one. Two strikes, one ball, two outs. Could be the ball game right here. Could be the ball game right here. And grounds run roller. up to the third baseman. Oh, oh and they're going to score the tying oh, run. Oh, my. Slow ground ball up to third base. It makes a bad throw to first. Couldn't quite get it. It's out of his, out of his glove. Kind of hung up in there. <laughs> well, we're having so much fun. We're just gonna at least going to play another half inning. Very, just a real slow, easy grounder. So what Telequal can't do right now is get upset at themselves and let this compound into another now another mistake. You know, let that one go. So you're right, the pitch before that one, boy, he just barely got a piece of it. Yeah. Anyway, Satchel Page, back in the day, the story goes he would have his uh, barnstorming go around and play these local teams, you know, and some of them, they weren't professionals. They were just people. Ooh, and uh, he would have all his outfielders go sit down. <laughs> and he'd just pitcher and catcher, and, and uh, more often than not, he'd win the ball game. <laughs> That's the third error we've had this inning. Yeah, I think that was the right call on that one. He pulled him off the bag with the throw, but he didn't get the tag that time. I think that's what coach is asking to check. Well, now they've got runners on uh, scoring position. They can take the lead here with uh, another hit. You know, Cutter's doing a good job. He's making good pitches. They're not getting good contact. Uh, they just need to get the out. Yeah. So he made a call at first. And then they immediately threw it to second. I'm not even sure he saw the play at second. Um, he's had some. He's had some really bang yeah. bang calls. Yeah. Now back for Goweda, number eight, Roscoe Day. It's it's very frustrating with. Uh, very frustrating. So let's bear down. Roscoe Gay uh, has got two hits tonight. Oh. So what, what do you think they got? They got runners on first and third. Two outs. First and second. Oh, first and second, okay. First and second, two outs. What are they discussing out there? Oh, I think he's probably just trying to get him to calm down and relax right now. He may be just talking about the defense, how they're going to play this. Um, but it's mostly to get him to relax and forget about it. I think uh, our, 
our shortstop, uh, when Kelly moved out to shortstop, he's playing so deep. Unfortunately, they hit a couple of easy little slow dribblers that he couldn't get to in time to make an easy play. So, unfortunate. A good hard line drive ground ball. It had been a easy, lot much easier play. All right, this this is the game here. Well, in the bottom of the seventh, we'll have Beckett Robinson leading us off. He's done a good job the last two innings leading off, or I should say, the fourth and fifth inning. This has gone from good shot. This has gone from being a fun game to now it's very tense. <laughs> well, the last the game we did last year was like this. It Boy, was, this has been a this has been a good one. Had a throw from a right field and nailed them for the third out. But yep. you know. He's one that got hit a while ago. Yeah, and he leaned there. into that one, too. That's a rule that you can't do that, but no, I guess nobody calls it. They do occasionally. I saw it in the major leagues. They've called it. Now, whether or not high school they do or not, I don't know. You're not supposed to try to get hit. Uh-oh. That was in the gap. Take on our throw in. Got a good hard hit out to right field. Scored a uh, go-ahead run, and now we have two more runners in scoring position. Uh, this thing going downhill quick. two outs here for a while now. Yeah, for a long while. Three errors and, uh, well, probably two. Uh, one should have been, but we made a great kid play on it. Two balls, no strikes. And two outs. So for everybody at home watching, the reason why I said he made a throwing error coming in from right field on that last one was he missed his cutoff and he allowed the runner at first to go to second. So now they got two runners in scoring position instead of one. But he probably would have stolen second anyway, so yeah, probably probably didn't matter in the long run. <clears throat> he couldn't quite get his the ball out of his glove uh, to make that throw. You made about three hops out there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah trying, to, trying to get the ball. Yeah, he, he did a great job even getting to that ball. I thought it was in the gap. And full count. Runners will be going there. So if they get a hit, they'll definitely get, get two runs out of this. Vital, vital, vital that we get this. Boy, that's a, a lot of stepping out of the box. You don't see that in Major League much anymore. They won't let them. Yeah, they got that pitch counter thing. Yep. Big pitch, we big go. pitch. All right, we're going to come right back for the bottom of the seventh. Tiger, Telequel Tigers trailing six to five. Welcome to Telequel Tiger Basketball on the Green Country Sports Network. Tonight's game is brought to you by First State Bank, Telequel's Bank. 
Great Dutch Funeral Home. Horseshoe Inn and Campground. Call Jeremy or Jessica Courtney. Armstrong Bank. Baker's Furniture, where you buy the best for less. State Farm Agent, Laura Vaughn. Hutchins Law. Countryside Wellness, Family Chiropractic Care and Clinical Nutrition. Skate House, where the good times roll. Chris is quickly. Two Sisters Financial. The Telequal Handyman. H&H Quality Tires and Auto. Grace Medical Equipment. Medical Equipment Provided Grace. State Representative Bob Ed Culver. Straight Edge Barbershop, 514 South Muscogee. Suzanne Myers and Jesse Bernard, your hometown real estate team. Pro Mortgage Associates. And we're back on the Green Country Sports Network. Well, here we are, Craig. It's been a great game the whole game, but pressure time now. We're down six to five, the last bats here. Uh, got the person we'd want up there, I think, up there. So uh, a lot of pressure on these kids. This is, this is good it's to see, uh, get you used to the playoffs. There's going to be times like this in the playoffs. It would be really good if you can execute and tie this game up. Ooh, there's a curveball. Yeah, I had Beckett bailing out on that one. Yeah, I would too. Look like he's going to hit him. So two strikes, one ball, protect this plate. He he is really wild, but he just throws enough strikes. And, yeah. To keep you honest, but worried at the same time. Try that curveball again. Three and two. Crawford. Well, that's unbelievable. He made that out as fast as Beckett is after dropping that ball. Wow. Boy, that ump has had some bang, bang plays over there. I think he was loafing. Looked like he's going to go foul, and I think he was just kind of hesitated. This guy's like Rick Vaughn from Major League. <laughs> Wild thing. <laughs> yeah. The wind kind of switched. Did he catch that? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I'm just going to say the wind kind of switched there to blowing in from right field. Yeah, and uh, the right fielder dove. How can you call that? You didn't even see it. <laughs> this is the third time he's been out there. Had some close goals today. That second base umpire is supposed to be out there. Uh, yeah, he's not supposed to be on the infield grass. No, he's hit supposed to, to be outfield. out there watching. He's uh, that poor guy has had a lot of close calls and. So there we go. Now we have two outs. That's a pretty miraculous catch he made out there. That's fake news. <laughs> I 
Well, this is a game we felt like we had in hand, well in hand, and then it just, uh, the bottom fell out. Well, lessons learned. You make a mistake, it's all right. You just can't let it compound and then make three or four mistakes. Four mistakes, yeah. That's what happens. Sprinkle in a hit or two there. You get a three-run inning. But it's not over in baseball. It just takes one swing make things happen so literally we one had swing we we'll say we had Corita in this situation in the top of the inning and they responded they were down to their last strike several times and they end up working it for three runs so Let's see what Telequal can do here He's called that all game, and he didn't call them. <laughs> I'll tell you, this guy's not very good, I don't think. But, but it's hard to find him. You just do the best you can. Ooh. Now that was Eagle. Now we got the tie and run on base. Yes. Now we'll see if that'll get this. Sometimes hitting somebody gets you off your rhythm and gets you thinking about it. And you're not throwing the ball anymore. You start trying to aim it. Yeah. I'd like to see him get a good one here. He's plenty capable. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Can it go, can it go, can it go? Oh, it Over his head. There's a tying one run coming in. Get down, get down, get down. Oh, go slide. Go back, touch the base, touch the base, touch the base, touch the base. I don't know if he touched the base or not. <laughs> Sinjin Sampson got a hold of one deep, deep center fielder. We didn't know it until the last second yeah. if he had caught that. He, he jumped and it just barely got over his head. <laughs> oh, man. And I didn't know if Eagle had enough air left to get all the way home, but he did. And he should always slide when you're coming in second. But Sampson got a hold of one deep, deep there. And that was kind of against the wind. That didn't, yeah. wasn't wind aided. Drop in there, drop in there, drop in there, drop in there. Pop up to first base, uh, but <laughs> what does one swing, one swing. Wow, it ties that game up, uh, extra innings here. I think we may have went to extra innings last year too. Maybe, no we didn't. This was uh, so double, wow. What a game. I'm t we, we picked a game to call, didn't we? <laughs> they, they were down to their last strike. We were down to our last strike. Yes. Yeah, if I was, I don't know, I'd be fixing my hat or borrowing someone's smaller hat or something. <laughs> His hat keeps falling off. We're not taking a commercial right now. Well, we've had a little of everything. We've had walks, hits, arguments with the referees, umpires, close calls, great hits. Man, <laughs> like you said, Coeta was down to their last strike. We were down to our last. Well, I don't know if that's the last strike or It not. was on Eagle. Oh, Samson uh, had a 0-1 pitch, and I mean, he hit it right back up to the 400 mark off the wall. We got a new hitter, a uh, pitcher. Still cutter, I think. Well, he kept his hat on that time. It kind of <laughs> fooled me. Two times in a row. Maybe you don't snap his head as much on a curveball. Well, he's up to 0-2. Uh, man, I like this. 
three in a row. And no messing around with him. Is that another curveball? I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Man, he's not messing around. Get that ball and throw it. That was a fastball. And a hat fell off. So that's how you can tell if it's a curve or a fastball? Maybe. <laughs> fastball and a hat falls off again. Two balls, one strike. Jackson Plyer, the fouled one off his hands. He's a little behind on that one. Yeah, he's protecting the plate there. <coughs> yeah. That was not another nice curveball. Two and two's the count. Every pitch kind of critical in these extra innings. Lines one down the right field line. It's, oh, foul ball. Jacob Morrison. We were, we were bragging on Ryan earlier. And Forgot that time. <laughs> it looks kind of cold out there. I see people with their hoods up on their hoodies. Yeah. He doesn't have a hoodie, so maybe he's frozen there. Frozen in place. And got another K. Boy, Coita struck out a lot today. Cutter's, is that his third? Uh, it's his fourth. Fourth K? Fifteenth all together. Well, we always looking ahead. Uh, we have Levi Kelly, Tate, and uh, Gardner coming up in the next inning. Well, he's throwing good now. I can see why he's got a 164 ERA. 1-1 one, one to count, two outs, Craig. Hugh shot, stay with it. Oh, man, that saved a hit right there, being able to get his glove on it. That speed helped him out on that one. Man, what a game, fellas. What a game. If you're watching from home, you have picked out a good one. Tell your friends, we're going to be on YouTube. You can watch this thing after you get home. Tell your friends about it. These players will probably all go home and watch this when they get there. Yeah, we're at 97 views now. It may double by midnight tonight. Yeah. This is a this is a wonderfully wonderful game. It'd be even better if Telecorp could pull out another uh, hit. So we've got the the bottom part of our lineup uh, in here. But they've contributed today. It's uh, Really overthrew that one a lot on his warm up pitch. We say this every broadcast, but if you have any desire to be an umpire, or they need you, they need you. They've got people that'll mentor you and help you, make you a little money, and help out these young kids at the same time. Oh, two, you're setting fastball here. You're waiting. 
and then you try to react when it's off speed. He's a, he's a pitcher. He's got a pitcher's batting average. <laughs> Just a young player get better and better, though. All right, here we go. How about the top of ball, number 12, Harry Hanley. Pop up to the left hand side and oh, here on top of the dugout. Imagine that was pretty loud in that dugout, what do you think? A little bit. So, uh, way behind here, uh, no balls, two strikes. Oh, lines one right up the middle. Can he beat it out? Holy moly. Wow, throws that one over the over the first baseman's head, over the fence. Had a kid. Good job. Yeah, freshman jump in there and do that. But speed, you know, it's it forces him to throw it a lot harder than he wanted to. And we got Cutter Gerdner, our best hitter up at uh, uh, with a score. Uh, Winning run. Yeah, and we got some speed on the base path, so even a hard single straight to an outfielder um, should have a play at the plate. Um, spitting a little rain right now. I'm seeing some seeing some moisture on the windows. Really? Well, they said they had a chance. So let's get this game over with right here. A good hard hit in the gap. We won this game. There's one out. I should... Oh, wow. Holy mackerel. A shot down the third base line. <laughs> you cannot hit one any harder than that, I don't think. <laughs> Unlucky. Unlucky, unlucky. Yeah, that's ball game if that gets by him. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And uh, he got on earlier just a blooper out right field and then get robbed on that one. It's a crazy game. Yeah, don't get thrown out at third here. We don't want that. For sure. That's a one of the uh, unwritten rules of baseball. Don't get the third out at third base. This is coach's son. He's uh, he's had uh, been in this position many times. I bet he hit a rocket last time too. So are they trying to walk him on purpose? You think, Craig? No, I don't. I would. Got an open base over at uh, first. Yeah, when you look at who's on deck right now, no, you don't. Northern batting 323. Is Beck, uh, this guy's 410. That's oh, a good pitch to handle right there. Boy, he was right on that one, too. I like my odds on this one. I think he's going to do it. The wind shifted out, blowing right in here in our in our press box now, shifting around. Runner advances on the pass ball there. I don't think that was on the pitcher. I think the catcher just missed that one. Maybe uh, 90 feet from the from the wind right here. Wind's kind of blowing right in in his face now. He's a left-handed batter hitting right into the wind. There it is. There it is. And we get a walk-off. There it is. Walk-off hit by <laughs> Chance Pear. 
And what a game. Telequa pulls it out. Seven to six. Wow, what a game. Tell your friends, go YouTube. Ryan. Green Country Sports Network. Ryan. There he goes. He finally turned it around there. <laughs> what a game. That was a well-played game, both teams. They had a few errors here and there. Uh, Coeta was really disciplined at the plate. Um, the Telequal came through clutch there at the end. Yeah. Yeah, both teams <laughs> did what they had to do to, to get back in that ball game. And what about uh, Hanley? Uh, jumped in there and got him a, a hit that ball got in position to score a, yep yep good for him good that'll for him. that'll really build his confidence moving forward so uh we're going to sign off and we will be back tomorrow weather permitting at what time five o'clock 4 30 4 30 all right good night from green country sports network <laughs>